Hi, I'm Jeff Spencer from the Tailscale product marketing team. And today I'm joined by Brad Fitzpatrick, who's here to tell us a bit more about a new feature that we've been working on called Tailscale Funnel. Brad, before we get started, can you just tell us a bit more about yourself and what you're working on sort of generally here at Tailscale? A little bit of everything, bounce around between um, Tailscale, uh, the back end, the client, basically anything that doesn't involve JavaScript. Um, <laughs> try to avoid that, but yeah, I, just, I bounce around and do a little bit of everything. Some of the uh, the derp, the data plane, the control plane, the, the clients, whatever's broken, whatever's fun. Well, it sounds like a, a widely varied experience. So let's jump right into it then. Uh, what is Funnel? So Funnel is something to let you, or external traffic from the internet into uh, your Tailscale node. So if you need to get something like a, like a GitHub webhook or something, or a webhook from whoever, from somebody that um, doesn't doesn't have tail scale access or you know can't install it or whatever, you can then have a very limited thing exposed publicly, and we host we host these like funnel ingress nodes for you, and then we proxy the traffic down to you. But we do it in a a, a pretty fun way where we can't see any of the traffic and uh, you terminate all your TLS and stuff. Okay, cool. So is Funnel like a hosting provider? Is, is it a CDN, like Edge Cache, or, or what is it? No, so it's, it's not like, um, we can't cache anything because we can't see anything. And we try to like get it, we try to get the edge as close to your node as possible. So if you're like, you know, if you're in San Francisco, we try to get the traffic ingressing somewhere in San Francisco to be near you. So we're not like bouncing back and forth across the country or whatever. But um, the basic idea is that if you choose to expose something, you can say, yes, I want traffic to this um, this port number. Um, and as long as it's TLS, as long as it's SNI, we will, um, well, for, first you turn it on, it's double opt-in. So you turn it on on the admin console and you turn it on on the node itself and say, yes, I want this. And once both of those are on, then we create a public DNS record, like not, not the magic DNS stuff we normally do, but um, boring traditional DNS and we publish a record there. So then anybody else in the world or GitHub or anyone who's like sending you a webhook or something can then look up your, you know, your uh, magic DNS name, your, you know, food.tailnet.ts.net. And then that will point at one of our ingress nodes. And we just look at the very beginning of the connection at the beginning of the TLS and look at the SNI name, the, the server name that's at the beginning of in the client hello. And then we, um, we have you peered over tail scales. So then we connect to you and we give you that TCP connection and we proxy it through. And we don't know what's in it. We just saw the clear text uh, client hello at the beginning that had your, your domain name. And then you get this connection and you decide if you want it. So we tell you like, hey, it came in um, from the internet, from this IP port, it's for port 443. Here it is if you want it. And if you want it, then tail scale can be configured to um, to either pass it through to another web server you have on your machine if you're using like uh, Caddy or Apache or something, or if you don't want one of those, you're just like doing some little development thing um, uh, with like traditional HTTP, like plain text HTTP, you can map it through to a uh, to a local web server you have there. So like you could be like in Python or Ruby or Node or whatever, and you could say, okay, I'm running a little, my little dev server on port 8080. And then you like run a tail scale command or two, and now it's like on the internet with TLS certs, but we're not terminating the TLS. So when the connection comes in, all we do is look at the name and send it to you. So it's your actual, your tail scale D on your machine that is provisioning a cert using our previous like uh, HTTPS stuff. And so you get a TLS cert from Let's Encrypt and you terminate it over that TCP connection we proxied. So um, yeah, it kind of like lets you very quickly put things on the real internet. Um, you know, because you know, not not everyone in the world uses Tailscale yet. So if you if you need to get something in, you know, the the traditional boring way, we'll we'll support that now. <laughs> well, we'll get there eventually. Uh, so can you tell us what you're using Funnel for? We're not really using it too much yet, but the plan was, um, I mean, the reason it came about was we wanted to run some internal tools and dashboards showing stuff from GitHub using the GitHub API, but we didn't want our tools to be sitting there polling the GitHub API. And, you know, GitHub has nice webhook infrastructure for telling you when something happened. But once we did that, um, now all of a sudden we have to give a URL to GitHub to for them to like send us back our webhooks. And, you know, we like running all of our infrastructure on little closed off VMs that are not on the internet. Um, containers or VMs, just like something that has no internet access, only has tail scale access. So no ports are mapped. And so that was kind of sad. So we always talked about, oh, one day we should like some have some way to get uh, traffic in from the internet. And then we kind of realized recently with um, 
between HTTPS certs and um, having magic DNS kind of done. A whole bunch of projects kind of like all got finished up and we realized at this point it was pretty easy. So we should just do this. So it started off as a really quick prototype hack recently to show that like, hey, look, it works. Like all, we have all the pieces already. We might as well ship this thing. So decided to put it out there. That makes sense. And, and I know you you covered it in some uh, in some detail earlier, but is there anything you want to add about how Funnel works? No. So I guess one of the cool things we realized in the, the middle of the process was we were making some cool like CLI tools for the demo to you could say, um, you know, tail scale serve, you know, some other sub command and you could like run like Python simple HTTP server or something on a directory or, you know, whatever your uh, little scripting language of choices with a web server built in. Um, it'd be nice to run that as a sub command and like not even specify a port, just like listen on port zero, have the operating system give you some ephemeral port. And we could just look at the, the process tree underneath the child process and say, oh, okay, you know, you ended up listening on this port from the kernel. And then we could like automatically map that and, and forward it all through. And when we were doing this, we were like, well, that's actually really cool. Why can't we just do that inside tail scale anyway? Like that doesn't need to be on the internet. That's cool by itself. So kind of um, in the middle of the development, we kind of said, well, okay, there's really two features here. There's the kind of automatic web server reverse proxy and you know TCP forwarding thing. But there's also the, do you want to then expose that server to the internet or not? So we kind of like broke the um, the CLI and the, the feature set in half. So a lot of this new functionality that's coming for Funnel is actually new stuff you can use inside a, inside a Tailnet directly without exposing it to the internet. Well, what about different types of traffic? Does it support things like TCP or other types? As long as it's TLS, as long as it has that little client hello at the beginning, we don't care what it is. It's just, it's just bytes to us and we'll you know, copy them through. So you can't do UDP, you can't do like port 80. I mean, you can do port 80, but it has to be TLS. So, but you can't do like plain text HTTP. We're not gonna look at like a host header and pass that through. We don't wanna see the traffic. So you have to terminate the TLS and we can do that for you in, um, uh, in TailScale D. I guess we, we could in theory terminate the TLS because uh, we control TS.net and we have the TS.net domain name. So we could provision our own Let's Encrypt certs, but we're, we're just telling people we're not doing that. And you can verify that we're not by looking at the um, the CT, the certificate transparency logs and see that we're not provisioning certs for you. Uh, okay, so if the nodes that I'm sharing are public, then uh, how are they protected? You know, if my, is my traffic still encrypted? Is it is it just like when I use TailScale? Pretty much, it's, there's two layers there, just like when you're using HTTPS, um, like when we added a uh, Let's Encrypt support to TailScale, that was a little bit redundant because you're doing your HTTPS encryption and the WireGuard encryption. And the whole reason we did that was just so browsers looked happy and had a little, you know, they didn't say insecure because, you know, the browsers didn't know about WireGuard. So the same thing is happening here. Your um, first year traffic is HTTPS or TLS to, to our ingress nodes coming into the internet, um, the funnel ingress nodes. And then over that, it's WireGuard. So it's actually two levels of encryption, right? You have your HTTPS and your WireGuard. Well, it sounds pretty secure. All right, so uh, sort of into some fun stuff. Did you learn anything from building Funnel? There, there wasn't anything like super challenging about it. Like, you know, these are all, we had all done bits and pieces of this stuff in the past. So a lot of this was just like gluing together a lot of things that we already had. I, I mean, the, the interesting thing there was that as we were using it ourselves, we realized it was it was two features and we shouldn't lump them together. So that was a revelation, but I wouldn't say it's, we learned too much. Well, that's all right. Not every project is going to have the same uh, level of learning curve. Is there anything else that people should know then about Funnel? We're not, we're not turning it on for everyone right away. We're letting people slowly ramp it up, but um, we ho hopefully we'll be done soon. We don't know how popular it's going to be, so we want to let it uh, open the floodgates to the whole world and have all our infrastructure costs. We had to kind of guess how many uh, how many servers we're going to run for it and stuff. So, you know, it's the cloud. We could dial a knob and turn it up and down, but like, you know, Still want to get it somewhat right to start with. Sounds great. Well, Brad, thanks so much for the overview. Uh, and again, just as a reminder, as Brad just said, Funnel is currently in alpha. Uh, we're going to be rolling it out relatively slowly. And you can go to tailscale.com forward slash funnel for more information about how to get an invite. Uh, also, be sure to visit tailscale.com for more information about our other products or to try Tailscale for free. Thanks, everyone. And we'll see you next time.